Well, I know I showed you all the blower that I installed on my rat rod the other day. I do think it's honking. But I was just thinking about the major part of the, you know, the major part of the, of the body here. Uh, we've got this uh, chicken tea kettle in the house that I just think would match the whole theme of the car there a whole lot better. The only problem is I can't figure out how to get it out of the kitchen without a sweet baby uh, catching me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wait till she's upstairs doing some kind of girly thing, and then I'm going to sneak it out here. And as soon as I can get it out here, I'm going to sit it on there so y'all can see what it looks like, and then you can tell me what you think. Okay, sweet baby's upstairs fixing her hair or some girly thing like that. So 63 Impala said he wanted me to write to him and show him what the teapot looked like. Now, just look at how that chicken is just leaning into the wind. His little feathers are flowing back. He just looks like a high-speed chicken to me. I mean, you know, when you think about how this is all set up, here, let me set the camera down so I can get over here. Now. You think about how this is all set up, I mean, Holy cow, what could be better for a hot rod than something like that? That's just amazing, isn't it? I mean, I, it's unbelievable. Hey, honey! Uh -oh, uh -oh, uh -oh, honey! Uh -oh, uh -oh. What, what's my chicken doing? I'm talking about it! It's just a What's bit. my chicken doing? It ain't hurt nothing. It ain't hurt nothing. It's fine, don't worry what about it. Look, 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 it's going right back into the kitchen here. Here we go. <laughs> totally aware that some of y'all are just insanely jealous because I've got a, a hot rod and you don't but prepare yourself to become even more insanely jealous I have just come up with something amazing and you're gonna love it see rather than just have a rot rod I decided I'd put a blower on the rot rod oh you're gonna love this it's awesome just wait till you see it Eat your heart out, 63 Impala. Rusto Dan, you see that? Oh, I bet you wish you had one. What about that, Barney? You ever seen anything more beautiful than that in your whole life? Man, I am going to be a, a hit at the car show when I show up with my new blower on my hot rod. Holy cow. Isn't that baby a beauty? Let me give you a close-up so you can see all the, fine, all the fine details on this thing. Look at here on the side of it. It says... Hudson. It's pressed right into the metal there. It just don't get any better than that. Woo, doggies. All right. I'll stop now. I know y'all are already eating your hearts out out there. Feeling bad and everything. I apologize. I just couldn't help it. I just had to show off. See, this is why I don't ever get enough sleep. You see me at work falling over my head laying on the dash because I can't stay awake. It's because late at night I'm out here coming up with insanely brilliant ideas like this one. Y'all have a nice day now. Bye-bye. Well, I found a treasure at the local flea market today, and I thought I'd come out here and share it with you. And let me explain what we've got going on here. Uh, I'll bring the camera over to take a closer look. This is a uh, 1953 Cadillac 331 engine. Uh, it was made the year I was born. Runs like a top. I don't know if it's ever been rebuilt or not, but I bought it with no idea that it would ever run, and it did. It cranked up and uh, put a new time machine in it, and it runs fairly beautifully. Anyway, today um, I was at the local yard sale flea market, and I ran across this. This is a 1953 version of Hop Up magazine, and it has, uh, this is the new engines edition from 1953. So you open this thing up to like the second page, and here is the Cadillac. Here's the Cadillac 331 engine. Um, all, you know, detailed out and, and all the specifications. And you go through, you go through a chapter or two here, and then it gets into what they call hop-up, which is where they start talking about how to make the thing go faster, which to me is... Here's one with uh, two two-barrel carburetors, two four-barrel carburetors, uh, a variety of different setups, head modifications, wicked fun stuff like that. You can just imagine how much fun it is for me to find this book that matches that engine. But even more fun, I've got a, a buddy out in Washington State who's building a, this is a, this car is built on a 33 Chevy frame. My buddy's building a, a 33 Chevy pickup rat rod. He's got a 1953 Chrysler Hemi head engine that he's thinking about putting in it. And lo and behold, I, I turned uh, two or three pages here, 
and we come across the Chrysler 1953 Hemi head engine with all the same stuff, all the specifications of the engine, uh, all kind of details on the engine, and it's got the little hop-up section which talks about how to make it go fast. Nowadays, you know, knowing how to make something go fast is not a big mystery, but back then, old school style, I just love this stuff. There's nothing I would rather do. You know, before you could get me to go out and spend a boatload of money on a bunch of aftermarket equipment to bolt on this thing and make it faster, I would love to go through something like this and do it the old way. So, just a real, uh, for me, it's a real treat and a real treat. I just thought I'd share that with y'all. People think that I ain't working on the hot rod when I ain't making videos, but you know, I might not be out here turning bolts on it, but I'm always working on it. I'm either collecting parts or dreaming about it or thinking about it or imagining how it's going to go or trying to line up the right tools or working to save a little bit of money to afford it, but you know what? I'm always working on it. It's a sweet project and I love it. You know, while I'm out here, it might be fun to take the hot rod out. I don't know how many more nice days we're going to get like this and uh, it's, it's been raining and it's wet out, but it might be might be okay to take the old girl out for just a little spin. Might spring a little mud up on me, but you know, I've, I've experienced worse things than having mud slung up on me because I was driving around with a cool old hot rod. Crank for me, girl. feel like Robert Mitchum when I do that. You know, I see in the, in the beginning of Thunder Road where he pulls it in the garage. Yeah, I like that. Have right, a nice day. Well, I've got one more finishing touch I can go ahead and add. I think I can do this today, too. Uh, when I was making my firewall, I didn't have a piece of metal to cover this part down here, so I used this old uh, grape nuts can, box, but my neighbor had this in his, uh, in his pile of stuff back there, and I ran across it, and he gave it to me, so I think what I'm going to do is just, I'm just going to put that right there, I think it would look, I think it would look just appropriate right there, and it would suit me very well, and it's just about the right size, and it looks a lot better than that grape nuts tin, so, by golly, it's the next thing I'll do, uh, about to, Sort of think about knocking off for the day already. Of course, I started at 
30 in the morning, I guess it's going to take knock off this early. But, uh, yeah, I think I'll just stick that right there if I can get my screwdriver gun over in there. I'm going to tell you how it's going to be. You're going to give your love to me. Love to last more than one day. And you know your love won't fade away. Enjoy the immortal words of Buddy Holly, y'all. Hey, sure has been fun playing in the garage. Appreciate y'all joining in. Have a nice day. Hey, this thing got some sound. weekend coming up. I'm going to fix my neighbor's muffler, but my muffler on the convertible is bad, going bad too. You hear it? So, all I'm going to do today, I went ahead and pulled the hot rod out, and I'm going to slide this in there and jack it up, and uh, just get up under it and look at the muffler, see what I need to order, go ahead and call the parts store and order the parts, and I'll run over there Friday morning, pick them up. I gotta work Friday night, but then Saturday I'll have my muffler and Lee's muffler, and I can get uh, I can get both those muffler jobs done. That'd be good. Get that out of the way. Get this thing so it doesn't. It might sound good on the racetrack, but you drive right around on the street, and some cop will want to pull you over and talk to you. You know, and I hate that. This makes me ugly. Anyway, that's the plan. This is not as pretty as what I was hoping. Uh, looks like I'm going to have to try to get this apart right here. And it's not that easy to do. It might be easier. There's four bolts in the back of the uh, catalytic converter. It might be easier to pop those four bolts out so that I can pull this whole thing out so that I can get to this. Well, today's muffler day. I got my neighbor's truck fixed early this morning. That went pretty quick. And then I uh, crawled up under the old saw up there and uh, I cut the bolts right out that holds the, uh, the front of the catalytic converter. I can replace those. It's easier to cut them than it is to try to get them loose. And I've been using my air hammer to get this old pipe off of here. You can see it's just about off the old muffler now. Uh, next thing after that comes off, here's my new muffler here. Got the, got the uh, muffler job finished on the convertible. Okay, I'll let you hear it. Nice and quiet. There's a lot more trouble than I wanted it to be, but you know, sometimes it's like that. And it wasn't anything serious, you know. 
bolts didn't fit or come out the way they were supposed to or go back in the way they were supposed to. So I'm back to my list. Okay, well here's the deal, my my aviator cap and my goggles are made today, and uh, I just couldn't imagine having a equipment like this and not testing it, so I was thinking I'd, I'd go out and get in the hot rod and take it for a little ride. You know, I mean, you got to test your equipment. I mean, if you don't test your equipment, how you going to know if it's going to fail you or not if you, you know, out in extreme circumstances or something like that. So, anyway, I'm going to go out and get the hot rod and go for a little ride and see how it works out. I'll keep you posted. I think the scarf is failing the test, but the rest of it seems to be working out pretty well. Woohoo!
got a windshield that's supposed to be coming in. It's actually the original 47 Ford truck windshield. And, you know, I was looking online, and those places that make windshields, they probably cost quite a lot of money. But I found one where a guy had the original one. I thought, well, it'd be cool to sit it in here. It's probably going to sit up a good bit higher than, uh, than what would necessarily look absolutely the best. But on the other hand, when I'm sitting in there, I'm, I'm sitting up a lot higher than the windshield frame is right now. And, you know, if I don't have a windshield in front of me, I'm going to be eating bugs and stuff. So maybe it wouldn't hurt to sit a big, tall windshield in there, at least see how it looks. And then, you know, if I do decide to cut it down, uh, just look around either figure out a mechanism to do that or find out somebody that can do it. But uh, uh, I'm, I'm enjoying the idea that I got the weekend off. I do have some muffler work I got to get out of the way, but I'd kind of like to get that out of the way and then just spend the whole weekend out here working on this thing. There's some changes I'm thinking about making. Uh, the way this body mounts right here. It's funny when you put one together after you kind of get it going then you start looking at things you want to change. I think I'd like to bring this, instead of having this be kind of wide open where you can just see the springs and the frame and everything, I'd kind of like to bring this down so that it's kind of even with the bottom of this and kind of disappears behind the wheel. And back here, something similar, I got my, uh, if you get down low here, you can kind of see my gas tank hanging down. I'm going to move that gas tank. I'm going to set it inside the trunk. In fact, I'm going to get me a 15-gallon fuel cell. That's a five gallon aluminum tank right there and it ain't big enough I've already had to I've already run out of gas just driving this thing around the quarry two or three times so I'm going to take that out and uh, get me a fuel cell and put me a fuel cell in there in fact as I look at this I might can fit that fuel cell right back in there somehow I'd have to kind of study on that a little bit that's an interesting thought but I figured if I couldn't I could sit it right here uh, and then I'll maybe I'll kind of box in a little area back in here because uh, you know you always want to carry along a I don't know a, well I don't know I guess you need a jack if you don't have a spare tire do you I started to say a jack but you don't need a jack but maybe a picnic basket and a can of WD-40 and two or three wrenches and uh, <laughs> one thing and another like that I don't know anyway I'm just out here looking and daydreaming I'm going to figure out which part of what I want to start on in the morning. One thing I have been kind of thinking a good bit about is building my hump. My hump for over the transmission there. Uh, I got part of an old A model hood out there leaning against the side of the building. And I was studying on this and thinking, you know, that A model hood's got about the right bend to it. If I was to figure out how to cut the piece out just about right, I could probably slip that right over that transmission hump and that'd work out real good right there. Anyway, I guess that's enough. I'm, it's cold enough where if I just stand out here and talk and stuff, that I start thinking I'll get on in the house. It is late, but I'm just having a bad love affair. Can't help myself. Y'all just have to bear with me. I love mud splattered on the old girl. Something about that just makes me happy. <laughs> makes her look a little bit used. I can deal with that. Y'all have a nice day. You know, the Wright brothers didn't invent the airplane on the very first try. It took them a while, a lot of different, <clears throat> a lot of different, uh, you know, modifications before they ever got the thing off the ground. Well, that's that's kind of the way this blower project is working out. I I have reinstalled it and re-modified the mounting brackets and, and the whole body of the thing. And I have come to the conclusion that this is the ultimate way to go right here. So... Feast your eyes, y'all. This is it. I got my blown hot rod. We are ready to hit the road. Woohoo! Yeah. Eat your heart out, 63 Impala. <laughs> Today a blower. Tomorrow a floor. Whee! Okay, I went ahead and put the final touch on this baby. I knew it wouldn't be right till it was right. And I think now you have to admit that's just right. That's just that's just right, right? Yep. So uh, let's see the other side. I know you want to. I know you want. I know it's a lot to take in all at once, but there she is. Got my blower all mounted up. I thought about putting a little tail fin on that part that's hanging out back there, but 
might cut my hand if I reached across the windshield to go pump on my blower and I had a tail fin on there. So I decided I'd just leave well enough alone with that. Y'all have a nice day. Kind of works better when you don't have antifreeze splashing in your eyeballs. At least that's what I found. <laughs> Oh, what a lovely day. You wouldn't think it was February. Oh, Well, that was an action-packed adventure, wasn't it? Ah, I think I got some mud on my hot rod. I don't know how much I got on my camera. Let's see what we think. Oh, look at here. She's all a spatter. <laughs> Dang. Messed up my new uh, metal flake perloid paint job there, too. Look at that. Dang. What am I ever going to do about that? Woohoo! Mm. Alright, well I guess I better get out my my polish cloth and wax this baby down. I can't let people see me with dirt on it. <laughs> I remounted the blower on this babe. I knew that uh, 63 Impala had been eating his heart out ever since he figured out I had a blower and he didn't. So. Uh, and I took it off here for a while, you know, but I just decided, you know, if you're going to go, you ought to go all the way. But I, I, I custom designed me a new mounting system. I don't know if you remember, I had a, I had that sort of high dome teapot kettle looking thing on here before. And now I've custom made my mount so that the blower sits a little bit lower. That reduces the wind resistance as you're going down the road at high speed, you know. Also, if I turn this wing nut so that it's... You know, not, I don't want to get too much wind resistance, so I'll turn that there too. So that looks to me like a pretty good setup right there. Uh, yeah, and, and the extra power I should get from having that blower, that's just going to be awesome. Uh, in fact, I'm going to crank this baby up. We're going to go out and give her a try here. Power. Yeah, I can feel a difference already. I believe somebody forgot to put the radiator cap back on. I can't believe that. I'm about to hire me some new help. That's all there is to it. I wonder what that splashing was with my radiator cap. Dang. You know, you just can't trust nobody nowadays. You just have to do everything yourself if you want to get anything done. That's all there is to it. Shoot. Far. Save mine. Just. <laughs> Maybe I didn't lose too many gallons of antifreeze. We'll go check that out. You know, it's kind of funny when I was putting the antifreeze in there, I saw this other radiator cap sitting over here, and I said, dang, I didn't realize I had two of those. Well, guess what? I don't. <laughs> uh, Y'all don't tell 63 and Pal I did that. He finds out I did that, he won't let me live it down. There. Okay, let's go back to the, let's go back to the test ride again. I guess I'll go ahead and show you this, too. My neighbor brought his truck down here, and we, uh, uh, basically, the muffler was rotted out, so he's going to get a new muffler. His back pipe is still in good shape, but it, it had been previously welded to this pipe, but it's uh, rotted out around here, and, and the muffler was rotted out too. So I'm just going to take a grinder, and I'm going to grind the old weld off. You can see what I've done in a little bit right here. 
looks nice and smooth and pretty. It's coming off of there with no problem. And he's going to pick up a new muffler, and then we'll uh, we'll put that back on there. But this stuff comes off good. I, I was a little bit uncertain when I started grinding it how successful I would be, but it looks as pretty as a picture. It's got a lot of good metal here, so we should be able just to clamp that new muffler right back onto there and be good. So that's what I'm working on now. <laughs> Okay, <clears throat> what was on my list that I was wanting to do? Let's see. Hmm. I guess I ought to finish up Lee's pipe before I start. <laughs> Okay, that's done. Uh, there's not a reason in the world why that should work just fine. I was able to clean all the weld off it. it. Had a dent right there, but I think the pipe will slide up over it. The old one did, so that looks good. He's going to bring me the muffler. Uh, he can't pick it up till later today. And we're expecting snow tomorrow, so he's going to use his truck to plow with. So we're not going to start it today, but uh, that part's ready. We'll get the muffler in here, and then next time we'll have a day off and we're both around, we'll pull his truck in here and saw his pipe in two, slam that new muffler up into it, and uh, bolt that up on the back. He'd be good to go. I like, I like fixing stuff. Well, it's Friday night and the work's all done, and, uh, hey, you know, it's just kind of one of them nights where it's hard for me to stay out of the garage. I just somehow want to be out here getting my fingers all, all over this old girl. Uh, one of the things I'm going to do, this car hadn't been cranked today, and it's good and cold, and I want it to crank without me having to do too much messing around with it. I want to be able to just come in and hit the starter and have it fire right up. I've noticed sometimes when it sits a little bit, the gas will kind of drain out of the uh, fuel line. I think that's part of why it's sometimes it's a little harder to crank than others. And I'm actually thinking about re-inventing uh, the way the gas tank mounts in here. But I like to come out here on a cold night and just fire it up and, it, and, and just see how well it cranks because I have been playing around with the carburetor and different things. So. That's what I'm going to do right now. I'm just going to start and see what happens. I always bump it once just to make sure I'm not doing this in gear. And then the
I find that to be extraordinarily satisfactory when I can uh, hit it like that on a dead cold start and have it fire right up. I just please me to no end. And you know it just leaves me to no end sometimes just to come out here and crank it up and let it run. I think I might be having a serious love affair with an old piece of metal here. But well, I can't help it. I don't want to get scared. Uh, I told my neighbor I'd fix his exhaust pipe as soon as I got this where I could pull it out. So I'm going to go ahead and pull it out, sit it out there in the rock yard, and sweep up the floor and everything in here. And, uh, I'll give him a chance to see it out here. Maybe he'll bring his truck down. I can weld up his exhaust for him and then get it back in here. I've got a list. Uh, where's my list? You can see that I, I store things in a pretty <coughs> highly efficient manner here. My list says emergency brakes, transmission seal, and grease and check leak. Well, that's done. Speedometer cable, hook up the lights and the brake lights, do some wiring. Uh, build a transmission hump. Yeah, I got to do that. Uh, windshield. Yeah, I got one ordered. Uh, seat belts. That's on the list. Bolt the seats down. Change the oil and the filter. I did that. Uh, put in rear end bearings and windshield wipers. So, so far, that's what I got on my list of things I need to do before I get a sticker. And if I think of something else, oh, I need to I need to put a vent in the uh, gas tank. So, anyway. With that said, I'm going to crank this baby up and get her out of here. It's gonna snow. I got saw a couple of flakes in the air. There he comes. Well, she's running, she's smoking, that engine was out, and the mechanic told me while he had it out, he flipped it over, so he spilled antifreeze all over it, that's why it's smoking like that. It will do that, but it brings the antifreeze off of it. The, uh, the choke was set way too rich, that's the reason it wasn't running any good a while ago. Um, I adjusted the choke, and it's uh, considerably better. I have a... Uh, Repaired the leaks that I used to have here because these bolts were broken off. I only had uh, three bolts on one side of this. Now all of my exhaust is coming out the pipe back here instead of blowing out up in the uh, around the heads, which is a good thing. Uh, and you can tell it's a lot easier to kind of regulate the kind of noise that things make. Uh, I got a whole list of things I want to do to this, but I wanted to. Just go ahead and get it cranked up to start with. Uh, and test the clutch. Seems like the clutch is working good. I think all that's going to be just fine. I lost my wing nut. Dang it. I'm sure it's here on the floor somewhere. But she's running pretty good. I'll uh, 
I'll get my list out tomorrow. Let's see how much of this stuff we can get done. That's a good enough day's work for me. Y'all have a nice day. I think I'm going to go in the house and think about tomorrow's adventure. I believe I can slow that out of down a little bit more. Let's try it. She is smoking, but I know where it's coming from. I guess he's going to have to do that for a while to burn all that stuff off of it. That's okay, though. I don't mind to smoke. Good for it. Well, I dropped my camera a while ago, so if it ain't working, somebody let me know because I wouldn't want to keep making movies on the camera that ain't working. With that said, uh, I'm making a, uh, a transmission, I mean a drive shaft loop. I've got two holes here in the floor where my seat bolts down. Of course, it goes through that oak floor and it connects to this piece of metal. And... Uh, I've, I've tested this by getting it up under there and putting it up under there. It's about the right depth. What it needs to be is uh, I need to cut it. Um, I need to cut it here and here so that it will slide up over that trans, that, that drive shaft. I think that drive shaft is three and a half inches. And it's four inches between these holes. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to burn two holes, one here and one here, to match those two holes. I'm going to cut off the access. I'm going to test it. And if it works... When I put the two bolts there that are going to hold my seat, they're also going to hold this uh, dry shaft loop. So that if I ever do throw out a U-joint up here, my dry shaft won't take a nose dive into the dirt. Not that it would kill me to do that. I mean, I've had them do that before, but I kind of hate to mess up a nice dry shaft. That's a spent money to have it built. So uh, that's what we're working on out here right at the moment. Okay, uh, that's finished and. This cross, this is that same cross member turned upside down. Drive shaft will go right through here. Uh, and the bolts, two bolts, one here, one here, go down through here, and then up to the bottom of the seat, the bolt to that. Uh, that's probably not as pretty as 63 Impala's work, but my mom can beat up his mom. So, nah, 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 nah. Y'all have a nice day. All right, I got that finished. Uh, it's... Uh, I went ahead and put it in place just so you, just so I could see it and make sure I got good clearances everywhere. Um, I'll, uh, I, and I do, I, I can reach my fingers in up around that. It's not too close to the drive shaft anywhere or anything like that. So I'm good with that. So let's see what else I'm trying to work on. This guy said to me one time, the best part of a car show is at the end of it, when they all crank up and drive out, because that way you get to hear them and see them go. And, you know, I was thinking about that. You know, you go to a car show, you drive in, you park, you walk around, all these cars are sitting there, and they're not moving, they're not making any noise, they're not doing anything. It looks sort of like statues. It's almost like they could be dead things. There's no life in them. I mean, yes, Johnny Chrome, some guy sitting there in a lawn chair, you know bored out of his mind. I mean, because I was working at this car, he shows up at a car show and he's just sitting there with it. People just walk around, they're looking at it, they can't touch it. Little signs everywhere saying, don't touch, don't touch. 
you know, it ain't working for me. It just ain't working for me. And, and i got some other thoughts I've been having lately, and I guess I need to share them with somebody, and since you're here, you know, here's what I'm thinking. Um, since I've built this rat rod, I've had a lot of people show up, and they'll go out there, and I'll say, you want to go for a ride? And I'll take them out, and I'll ride them around the quarry. I'll just make them happy as all get out. They just grin from ear to ear. I even... Uh, mentioned this on YouTube one day and I had a bunch of people writing and said I'd line up and pay you to ride in that thing. I'd love to ride in that thing. I was thinking on that, you know, some more. Uh, and then I was sitting in church. We, I go to this little church and uh, the thing I like about the church is that um, they do stuff for people. For example, we've got this Korean war veteran in church that uh, can't walk. He's got a, a wheelchair and he needed a, a van, a wheelchair accessible van, so the church is raising $21,000 to buy this guy a van. I think that's just honking. Um, I've also, I also know that they're raising money all the time to give to the uh, food pantry because people ain't got enough to eat. They're raising money to heat people's houses because people can't afford to heat, especially nowadays with people out of work and everything. You know, even the kids in this church are out doing me. They're all coming up with really interesting ideas to raise money and you know, here I am, I'm sitting around, I'm messing around with this old hot rod, and I'm thinking, dang, you know, it seems like I should be able to put together an idea that would incorporate all this stuff. Well, it hit me this morning in church. What if we had a, a, a hot rod show, a rod run, a, a car show that wouldn't, not like any other car show you've ever been to. What if the whole idea of this car show is that guys bring their hot rods out with the idea that we're going to let people ride at them. We're going to take people for rides, and the people are going to take the rides and they're going to make a donation. Like, if you want to ride in my car, great. Here's a little box. Put five bucks in the box, jump in the car. We'll go We'll go up, down, around by the old town hall. We'll go out on Highway 17. We'll wind her up a little bit up the road. Maybe I can bark the tires a couple of times. Go back around by the tractor place and come up by the fairground and back to the church. That ought to be worth a few bucks to somebody. I mean, we wouldn't have to say, you know, you have to pay five bucks. But, you know, what if we just had a thing and said, you know, Make a donation. We'll jump in the car. We'll go for a ride. What if I did that? And what if, what if I got the folks at the church involved with me? And what if we all? What if I put out an invitation to other hot rod folks? Hey, come on down and show up on this particular day. We're going to have a car show. We're going to ride around. We're going to let some people find out what it's like to ride around in an old car. And we're going to raise some money. And we're going to feed some people. Or we're going to buy a wheelchair for this veteran. Or we're going to. You know, we're going to do something useful with our cars instead of letting them just sit there like dead, inanimate things. Well, that's what I've been thinking. That's what's been going through my brain in the last few days or last few minutes or the last few hours. I've just been thinking all this over. Um, I had another thought the other day. See, I'm putting all these thoughts and pieces together because that's how my brain works. I was listening to uh, a news story, and they was talking about this whole cash for plunkers thing. You know, that's where a while back they were paying a lot of money if you bring your old car in and they would destroy your old car and give you some money, you buy a new car. Well, this is a great idea for a lot of people because, you know, it gets these old gas hogs off the road. Well, in this news report, somebody was saying, well, why did they not let people do that for cars that was older than 1984? And they said, well, the antique car lobby was against it. And this news reporter had never heard of an antique car lobby. She would never heard of Hemings Motor News. She couldn't understand why anybody would want to save an old car. An old gas-burning car is polluting the environment. Why would anybody want to save one? She was just completely clueless. And the reason people are completely clueless is because they never wrote, ridden in one of these things. And the reason they never ridden in one of these things is because we ain't out there giving people rides. And we could be doing that. We could be throwing a whole different kind of car show, having people come down that had never been in an old car, letting them get in the front seat, taking them for a ride, showing them how much fun it is and how cool it is and how really interesting it is. And we could be raising a little bit of extra money to feed folks. Or who knows what? You know, whatever your favorite charity is. So that's what I'm thinking about. I'm thinking about having a different kind of car show right here in my little town. I'm thinking about, I think I'm going to go down to the church and I'm going to get the preacher and I'm going to bring him over here and I'm going to take him out in the garage and I'm going to put him in the, in the hot rod and I'm going to ride him around the car and then when I come back I'm going to say, okay, this is what I propose. I propose we put out an invitation. I can't do this this year because I ain't got my car stickered, but I'll have it stickered by next year. We put out an invitation to all the other hot rodders to show up, bring your car, be ready to ride people around, collect some money while you're doing it, 
and give the money to the church at the end of that and say, okay, put this toward whatever you're trying to raise money for right now. I bet we could raise a boatload of money. I bet we could have a boatload of fun and we could then do more to support the sport of old cars than anybody's doing right now. What do y'all think of that? Don't y'all think that's a good idea? I mean, I think it's such a good idea that I made this video because I wanted to introduce the idea to some other folks because there's other folks out there that like old cars and hot rods and hot rod shows. You know, I don't have to be the only one that does this. A lot of people could do this and it could turn into a really good thing. So that's why I made this video. Y'all have a nice day now.
Alright, I'm about to poke this motor right back in there. I'll show you the ears. Remember the broken ears I had on my transmission? The fella up in uh, Rockland. Did a really nice job of uh, putting them back on there. This transmission never did fit that bell housing all that well. That's an aftermarket bell housing and it 
be honest with you, it, it, I don't know how well made it was. It didn't. It, it's, it's one of those universal things. You're supposed to fit this motor and a Buick motor or an Oldsmobile motor or something like that. But uh, I had a hard time. I had to drill the bolt holes out to get it to mount to the back of the uh, bell housing. And I never could get the transmission bolts to line up just right. I think I had one about halfway stripped in there before. So he's got it all put together, all bolted together nice. I didn't even take it apart. I just left it because when he had those ears broke off, he was able to kind of re realign everything and get it to fit real good. So basically, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to poke it in this old girl. And then uh, probably we'll want to just crank it up and drive it a little bit just, uh, just for the heck of it. And then go ahead and do... What other what other work I need to do on it? But uh, uh, I'll probably need. Well, I know I'll need to bleed the clutch when I get it back in there and everything. But uh, but that's good. That's exciting. That's what we're doing. <laughs> sunny day here in hot rod land and it's cold in fact uh i'm about chilled to the bone i got some good work done in here i got the uh cross member set up i got it braced over to the battery uh don't look at my welds because they're ugly but they're they're strong i've never broke a weld i've never been the prettiest welder in the world i don't mean physical look because i'm a handsome devil she's uh glued back together and uh I plan to do some plumbing today, but I, I, got out here and I just kind of got into it. So, uh, cold as it is, I, I think I'm going to call that good for the day and go in and do some plumbing. And uh, y'all have a nice day. So, I'm back to my list. I think I'm going to take on the scariest thing on the list, which ain't all that scary, but I guess it's the thing I dread the most. And that's going ahead and redoing the, uh, making the, uh, hydraulic emergency brake set up on here and there's really no reason to dread doing it it's not a big deal except that i gotta break open the brake lines and re-bleed re them and all that fun stuff and you know i just sit and think oh geez i hate doing that but you know i don't know why no reason to hate doing it it's not a big deal and i figure that the sooner i get to it and get it done the better off because once that's done i can move on to something else that's more feels like lots more fun so I've already got a good start on this thing. Um, this is my uh, my switch right here. And pretty much all I have to do is uh, break open the brake line and run a brake line in one end of this thing and out of the other end. Hook it all up and bleed it. That's where it's going to go. Find everything I need to make this happen and then make it happen. And then we'll go sit her on a hill and lock the brakes and see if she rolls away. <laughs> Okay, I've got the hydraulic brake installed. Uh, inter interestingly enough, in my mind, I was thinking I was going to hook it to the front tires, and I had a, a brake line that came out of the cylinder and broke. For some reason, I was thinking that was the front, so I just connected it to where the brake was. Put it, you know, put a, 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 a connector in there, and uh, you know, brought it all together, got it all hooked up, and realized that I just connected it to the back brakes and. Uh, Rather than change it, I'm just going to leave it that way. You'll see a little bit of fluid there. I, I didn't realize that I had to have these fittings 
these fittings fit right into that thread, but they don't seal up. So I had to go to the store and get these fittings in order to, you know, put that in there and then put this to that. But that seems to be working good. I say working good. I've tested it in the shop by uh, mashing the brakes and trying to turn the back tire and then releasing it and having it released. So I know it's working. Uh, I'm going to give it a kind of a road test. So I'll take it and park it on my steep driveway and lock the brakes and see if it's good. Uh, that should, that should tell me what I needed to do. No, I went ahead and readjusted the brakes too while I was there, so. We're putting the hot rod motor back in today. I thought I'd go ahead and change the oil while I had it out. I thought I'd show you this. This is what an oil filter used to look like. These are a canister 
style all filters uh, they had these on the old Chevys right up until sometime in the 60s I think basically the canister well the filter dropped right down inside that canister I like this little handy dandy handle on top I think it's cute kind of reminds me of the picnic basket anyway I thought while well, I had this thing out I'd go ahead and uh, change the oil and uh, everything and then I'm going to poke it back in the hot rod and uh, bleed the clutch and get everything all back together and then we'll see where we go from there. I'd kind of like to drive it today or tomorrow, but let's see how much work we get. I know I've got a lot of other things I want to do in there before I get, before I get too far back together, but uh, that's what we're going to work on today. I started to change the oil on this thing a while ago while I had it up on the uh, engine lift but it was just too squirrely and a little scary to reach my hands up under there and everything with it hanging so I decided to wait till I got it in the car and I just did I went ahead and uh, popped out that old filter that I showed you before put that new one in there and uh, put some nice fresh 20W50 in there uh, motor pretty much bolted in I got the clutch bled uh, I was I was thinking that there was something not exactly right with the clutch and I believe it had more to do with the pedal setup than it had to do with anything else when I got to investigating it the pedal was loose and there was a couple of bushings in there it like they kind of wallowed out or, or come you know they weren't in there exactly the way they should have been so I got that all nice and snug it feels like the clutch is working good I, I think what I'm going to do as soon as I get everything hooked up I'm going to jack the back wheels up and just get in it and crank it and kind of work the clutch a little bit and you have to kind of set that hydraulic clutch and uh, I just want to kind of adjust it you know before I get it out on the road or anything but uh, anyway I just thought I'd give you a progress note I'm going to keep working on this thing I sort of like to crank it and uh, at least drive it a little bit today we'll see we'll see if I can do that it should be able to but I keep getting distracted with little things to fix here and there which is good. I mean, it's good to go through and, you know, you see something that you normally wouldn't see. You're up under the frame. You say, oh, yeah, I ought to take care of that right now. So, you know, little distractions, but they all work out for the good. Okay, we're going to take the old baby for a ride today. She has taken me on lots of nice rides. Now I'm going to take her on one. Uh, what I'm going to be doing is getting the, uh, I got a couple of, got some broken off bolts like this one right here in the exhaust manifold. It goes up into the head that holds the, the header on. That's easy to get out if you got a torch. Just heat it up and pop it right out. I'm taking this to the son-in-law. Uh, the guy that used to be the mechanic on the racing team back when we used to race and uh, he also inspects cars so I'm going to talk to him and kind of get his uh, his opinion on what we need to do to inspect this baby so we can get on the road I figure it's better to work with somebody than just show up one day with the car all finished and said okay sticker me you know and where he's uh, Sonny's son-in-law he he's uh, you know got a He's got a, we sort of got a mechanical tie-in that goes way back, so that's going to work out good. Uh, I got a couple more bolts that are broke off that's got to be drilled out. I don't like to drill them out. I can, I guess, but I don't really have the equipment. I got a few hand drills, you know, a few drills and drill bits and stuff. But it seems like it's always a real pain in the neck to try to drill one of them out. At least it is for me, so I'm happy to pay them to do that. And, and also, kind of gets us a head start toward working toward getting it inspected, but. I'm happy about this because my transmission is also in the shop. Uh, while this is gone, I can get out here and weld up my cross member and kind of look everything over, do anything else I need to do to tidy things up in there while this is all out of the way. And then I get the motor back and the tranny back, put it all back together, stick her back in there, and we'll go for a ride. And that'll be that'll be wicked fun. 
So, anyway, that's what we're doing early this morning. Okay, this is me and Zachary. We're going to the, going down to meet the mechanical guy and take the motor. We got the motor back there, so wicked cool. It's wicked cool. It's wicked cool, ain't it, Zachary? You like it? Zachary loves to ride. Almost as good as anything. Very slow here, but one thing we'll do it. Don't talk. Stop. Okay, so we're going to be very gentle. Going down the driveway because I don't want my motor to... I think I got it propped up pretty good, but I don't want to take any chances on having it flop around. I could, I could break off various and sundry little pieces and parts that I would then have to pay to have put back on or put back on myself. That wouldn't be no fun. So, steady as she goes, Zachary, steady as she goes. Truck dog, there's no doubt about it. You're absolutely a truck dog, ain't you? Well, what a beautiful day we got going for us here too. I like it. I like every bit of it. She's riding good back there. It's all right. That's what we want. Hey, Zachary, nice and easy. Here we go. Okay, we're going on a road trip. I just got off the phone with a guy who uh, says he can weld the ears back on this transmission, so I'm going to haul him into town. He said bring the bell house and he'd bolt it all together. It'd help him line the ears up, which is perfect. Uh, got off the phone with another guy who said he can fix these uh, broken, I got I got the bolts broke off where the uh, exhaust manifold goes into this motor. He said the best time to do it is with the motor out. So. Well, I got it out. I'm going to take that to him, too. He's, uh, we're going to do that Saturday. So, I'm going to take the transmission in. Take the transmission in today. Leave it with the uh, guy that's going to weld the gears back on it. While well, I got the motor out, I'll get this other guy to get those bolts out of uh, Get those exhaust manifold bolts drilled out. That's the kind of work I could do, but I would hate it. I hate drilling out broken bolts and then uh, heck when I get her back we'll put her all back together that'll be honking honking good <laughs> life is good y'all okay so I'm gonna shut up and uh, and drive I guess since it's snowing and all out uh, use a, a slight modicum of caution although I hate to you know it just kind of takes all the fun out of it but uh, I'll talk more later you know as I'm driving along here I'm looking at the road it looks like it's got ice on it that ain't good for that ain't good for you to help me out driving on a day when there's ice on the road. I ought to, I ought to be ashamed of myself for not taking better care of me than I am, but heck I got a hot rod to build and I can't just sit around and wait, you know, I, I got pieces and parts that need to be reattached and reassembled and put back together. So you know what? It's okay with me. I just go out and risk my life and limb in order to make my hot rod work because this kind of guy I am. Okay, we're getting close to the place where the where the guy is who does the fancy aluminum welding work. <laughs> so we're gonna see what kind of outfit he's got when we get down there. Well, yeah, it looks like a place back here. Oh, let's find the right guy. He said he had a red GMC pickup truck. He said keep going all the way to the back. So we'll find him. There you are. Mark's fabrication. That ought to get her done. Well, it turns out he's an old hot rodder too. He knew exactly what I was talking about when I told him what I had there and what I was doing with it. So that's that's smart. That's good. Always oh, nice if you don't have to pay somebody money that you pay money to somebody that's you know another hot rodder. I'd rather I'd rather do that than somebody that ain't. <laughs> I guess I'm a little bit prejudiced that way, but you know what? Too bad. Get over. <laughs> Alright, let's see if we can get back home without trashing this thing. Let's see if I can make me a new dipstick tube. My uh, dipstick tube is broke off and I tried to fish the little piece out from inside there but that kind of broke off too. But I was looking around, I found this piece of gas line that's just about the right size. It would almost slip inside of there. 
which got me thinking, well, it would probably slip down in here, down in the hole in the side of the block. So I took and uh, kind of straightened it up a little bit. Probably need to get the curve about right. It does sort of need to come up and miss that exhaust header. That looks pretty close. I think it wouldn't it be cool if I could uh, fit that right into there. I have to go down in there far enough. Oh, look at that. That's a beautiful thing. Let me show it to you. Let's see. Where's my mark? <laughs> okay, I'm pulling it back out now. Okay, here's my mark right here. Probably ought to make that mark where I can see it from this side. Either that or bend that up a little bit. Let's see. I think. Let me get a magic marker. I'll make that mark a little better. Alrighty, put it right in there and give it a little bit of uh, look at that. That's beautiful. Look at it. Look at it. <laughs> look at that. Now, we got a little dipstick here. Tight fit. Oh boy, look at that. Works though. I love it. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Okay, I'll talk about the cross member a little bit more. It has a kind of a forward looking lean to it, but the sides are straight. And what I think is that, you know, I was talking about that being the low point of the vehicle. I'm willing to bet that that thing has probably been drug over and caught on ruts in the road and all kinds of stuff down through the years. You know, that was an original cross member on this old frame. This was where it is and was a 33 Chevy frame to start with, and then somebody somebody kind of extended it out from there you can see where the motor mount sits uh, there's a different frame that comes out from that I don't even know what frame that came from and, uh, you know, I was talking to a 63 Impala about my frame by the day and I was explaining that it looked like it was it's pretty sturdy it's been boxed and it looks like it's been made out of all kind of pieces of this and that that's pretty much what it is but, uh, good and solid it works good anyway uh, that'll be another chore for me is to come out here and weld that uh, while I got the motor out. This is my gas line right here, so obviously I'll have to watch out and make sure I don't set everything on fire. It's always, you know, it always messes up a good day when you set the hot rod on fire, especially in the garage where everything else can go up with it. So anyway, I'll, uh, I'll get back to working on that and keep y'all posted on the progress. Well, I've been out here messing around a little bit in the hot rod shop today. I got my uh, a V8 hubcap. That's that's one of these, and uh, got it on here for my It's a beautiful day for pulling an engine out of a car. Uh, I am going to uh, 
yank the motor and tranny out of this babe. Uh, you know, it's funny, I often feel like it takes longer to get the radiator off than it does to get the engine out. There's not much to getting the engine out. I've got uh, two bolts up here, one bolt back of the transmission. I have to disconnect the throttle, the gas line, the battery. Uh, I'll take these headers off just to get them out of the way. Boom, should be out of there. I don't know why it seems to take so long to take the radiator out. Probably because I have to take these uh, rods loose and, and, you know, take the bolts loose down there, lift it all up. And every time I do, it seems like I spill a boatload of antifreeze, which I'm always trying not to do, but always seems like I managed to spill a little bit anyway. Uh, anyway, uh, that's the plan, is to get the motor out, uh, swing it around, pull the transmission off, assess the damage, and decide what needs to happen next. Uh, there's something weird going on with my clutch. I've got a hydraulic clutch in this thing, but the pedal is not returning all the way. And I tried to get down in there with a flashlight and look up in there, but I couldn't see it. But I can, uh, I can reach over in here and wiggle the clutch pedal. Let me see if I can... Yeah, see? Can you see that? I've got play in that, and there shouldn't be play in that. And when I push it, it doesn't go far. It's, it's almost like the clutch. Uh, a cylinder has gotten stuck in a clutch plate fork or something like that. So that's something I've got to figure out. See if there's been any damage done to that. So anyway, if I can just get this baby out, get the transmission pulled off of it, that will allow me to assess the damage and figure out what I want to do this weekend toward getting it back together. And that'll be a good day's work. I've already built a cross member and done some other things today. So if I can get that much done, I'll feel happy. Okay, got the engine out. Uh, kind of inspected the transmission. The ears broke, but it uh, doesn't look like a crack got into the uh, transmission case anywhere. And I believe, uh, I believe I can weld these back on or get somebody to weld them back on and they'll be they'll be good enough uh, I don't think I don't see anything remarkable about the clutch I took the uh, throw-up bearing out and inspected it all and everything looked good there so I think it's just a matter of uh, getting the ears welded back on cleaning it up putting it back together uh, get re welding go ahead and welding up my, my cross member that's up under there and that'll be good um, I will say this, I was very happy with how easy it was to get the motor out. Uh, I think I did it in about 45 minutes to an hour, although I didn't time myself, but it uh, seemed like it popped out of there really quick, so that made me feel good. And you know, this is a good time while I've got it apart. I, I uh, sort of fashioned up a battery box holder uh, down up under the floor there. And while I got it out, it'd be a good time to clean all that up and make it pretty and maybe brace it up a little bit. In fact, it would probably not hurt a thing to uh, brace that battery box to that cross member right there. Give it a little bit of extra strength. That would work out real good. So, I'm pretty happy with that. I guess the next stage here would be to uh, get that transmission in the back of the truck and uh, run it up to somebody who can weld aluminum and get them to weld those ears back on there. I might try that myself. My buddy Stan talks about uh, welding aluminum with a stick welder using aluminum rods and he says he's been doing it with success so heck if he can do it I can do it but what I might do is just buy some rods and go to his house and you know give him some money and say okay do it and let me watch you and that way next time I do it I'll uh, I'll uh, you know have some knowledge of how that works so anyway there's all that um, I'm happy with my day's work I'm gonna I'm gonna knock off and go in and warm up and take it easy and think about going back to work tomorrow so uh, I'm glad I got a little hot rod play in that always makes me feel better so uh, we'll talk to y'all next time I get a chance to work on this and we'll see where she goes from here today I'm going to be uh, pulling the motor and transmission back out of the hot rod but before I do I'm going to uh, I'm going to rework the, uh, the cross member that I'm going to be putting in here that's it right there and uh, I think what I'm gonna do is rework it and then uh, stick it back in there tack it
Well, my new dry shaft is here. And let me tell you, it is a thing of beauty. Just look at it. Woohoo! Came complete with new U joints, front and back. On the back, it has these kind of weird old style Ford U joints. All right, I went ahead and took the seats out, and I took one section of the floor out so that I could uh, see what I've got going on here. One of the things I'm doing here as I work on this is I am uh, fixing this so that the seats will bolt down through steel. Uh, what I did when I put these seats in here is I shot some, some big threaded uh, wood screws down in there and just bolted them with a wood screw to the, to the uh, oak floor which was strong enough for what I've been doing around here, just riding around the property. But what I actually want it to do is I want it to be bolted down uh, to the frame 
the seat should be. So I'm marking the places where I need to uh, drill a hole through the iron in, in order to put bolts through to bolt my seat down. I'm also placing this thing. This is the uh, uh, emergency brake setup. And the way this works is you, uh, you, you take your brake lines loose. What you see right there are my brake lines. And you run a connection from the brake line into one side of this and out of the other. When you get ready to lock your brakes, you, you push the brake and you push this handle down. And it's supposed to stay down. That's supposed to lock. And then when you push the brake again, it springs up and releases the brake. thing doesn't move much, but you just need to be able to reach down comfortably and, uh, and hit that thing. And I'm putting it right here because when I was sitting in the car, my right hand just falls to that exact spot. And when I was an old, when I was a truck driver back in the old days, I started out driving cab over max. Cab over max had a shutoff valve down in that gully between the seats, and I got into the habit of every time I go to slow down. Well, it had two things down there. It had a the equivalent of what they used for a Jake brake, which I would reach down there and flip that, and then I'd reach down a little lower to cut the truck off as I was coming to a stop. And to this day, when I go to slow down, my right hand goes down in the floor looking looking for that jake brake and looking for that cutoff so it seemed to me like the right place to put it is right there when i'm sitting in the seat and my right hand falls down to the spot it goes looking for it it falls right onto that spot there's a metal plate up under here i've cut the uh, oak out and uh, i'm going to cut this square out where the metal plate is i'm going to mount this thing down in there run the uh, brake lines from i'm going to actually take the brake lines loose and there's actually a place where the front brake line has a connection. You can see it right there. So I should be able to just unbolt that connection, come off of one side of it back to here, off the other side back to that line, bleed all the air out of it, and that should pretty well, that should pretty well take care of that. Uh, my brake lines will probably run over this and under this piece of oak, so I'll have to notch out the oak so that my brake lines can sit up in there and not, uh, you know, that oak can kind of sit over it and kind of protect it. That should work beautifully. This whole thing will fall down uh, about, probably about this much. Um, and I'll, uh, I'll rig up a place where I can bolt it into place there. And uh, that should be just ideal so that this will probably sit almost flush with the floor with this little handle sticking up. And I can just reach down and hit the handle when I want to lock the brake. And it should pop up when I hit the brake. That should be really good. So that and uh, bolting down the seats. Uh, I'll also be setting up, I've marked some spots where the seat belts would go and I want that bolted to some metal so I'll also do that uh, while I've got that floor out. And i got a whole list of other things to do but that's, you know, as I'm taking the floor out it's important to mark where I need to do what so that kind that of helps me figure out where I need to cut and weld and all this kind of fun stuff. So anyway, that's what I'm working on for the moment.
<coughs> as you can see, it's snowing outside. I wanted to rearrange the barrels, uh, get the rambler back there in the back because any work that I do on it this winter probably won't involve a lot of cutting and welding. But this one's another story. Uh, I'm going to pull the floor out and redo everything in there, put a new seal in the transmission. Um, I've got a list of things over here packed to the wall <laughs> that I'm going to do to it. But a lot of it's going to involve cutting and welding, so uh, I thought I'd get it here on the concrete floor. My floor in the back there is made out of wood. And then uh, I'm kind of all set to get my work done. Plus, it's just wicked fun to take the old girl out, even if it is just out in the snow and back. It's one of those days where I kind of love to take it out and spin around for a ride. As wet as that snow is, it would probably make quite a mess of me and everything else. But, uh, it's always tempting. Anyway, there's that. And, uh, let me see what I can get done around here.
Well, I think it blew out a good bit of that insulation, but it's still a good bit quieter. It won't blow that metal out, and I was thinking that little zigzagged metal would, uh, you know, pretty much basically uh, reflect all the noise around in there, squatting it down. So one of the interesting things about it is when it's not so loud, I can hear other things. Like I'm hearing a huge banging racket coming from the back of the car back here, but, uh, you know, I don't know if it's just trunk lid banging around or if there's something else down in there i got to look at, but that's a good way to be able to figure out what other problems might be. Uh, get it a little quieter so I can hear it. You see this stuff right here? This insulation is blown out of it, so maybe it will just blow that insulation out, but still, that's nice and quiet. Quiet enough where I think I can get a sticker with it like that. Uh, I've got some broken off exhaust manifold bolts here. Uh, actually, I've got, I got, I only got three exhaust manifold bolts on this side, so if I could drill them out and get some of that replaced, that would help us too. That's where you're getting that puffing noise. It's puffing around the exhaust manifold there. But I just feel good. It's amazing to get out in the, in the middle of winter. <laughs> my throat's full of insulation. And run this thing and, and have it kick snow up on you. If you look inside the car here, you see that snow there? That's from the, the tires throwing the snow up in the air. That's wicked fun. I'm loving that. All right, I'm going to cut it off for the gas fuel. Like I said, I'm going to cut it off before the gas fumes kill me and uh, go in and warm up a little bit, but oh, that was fun. <laughs> okay, I'm working on this muffler idea again. You may remember I've wanted to make some mufflers inside of these pipes and have come up with a variety of different ways to do it. Uh, what I've been doing this morning is taking some of this here type of uh, stuff. I don't even know what you call this, some kind of a band with holes in it and uh, I've bent a piece, uh, six pieces of it, for one for each pipe, like this, and then I'm putting a thin layer of fiberglass around it, and I'm sliding it up in that muffler, and I'm putting that motorcycle baffle in the back of it when I get it in there to hold it all in place. Um, I'm finding that I can regulate how much exhaust flow I have by how much fiberglass I put around it. Uh, if I put too much in there, it cuts it off altogether. So that's what I'm playing with right now. The idea is to get this quiet enough so that when I take it to get inspected, if it's not noisy, I think I've got a better chance of getting away with running these pipes than if I take it in there and if it's loud as all get out. Uh, so that's kind of what I'm messing with right now. I've got them all in there except one. I wanted to show, what, show you what they look like before I put the one more in there. And then I'm going to crank it up and just see what it sounds like. And... I may have to adjust it. I might have to pull some of them out and put a little bit less or a little bit more insulation in there, but I'm, I'm playing with that idea. All right, let's see what she sounds like. Wow, that's nice. Nice and quiet. Get a little fiberglass in the air over here. I expect it will blow out. I think I'll tighten up my manifold bolts and go for a ride and see what I can do.
actually looks pretty cool with a banjo on the front seat. I've got a whole list of things I want to do to the Roadster. Um, it needs to have emergency brakes. The seats are bolted down to the wood, but I want to make holes through the metal and bolt the seats down to the metal. I also want to put uh, hooks in here for seat belts. I've got some aircraft seat belts to go in here. Um, I've got a hydraulic brake switch that's kind of something like a line lock switch that I can hook to the brakes and use that for emergency brake. I want to work on these headers uh, to get them quietened down because I'm going to try to get this thing inspected with those headers on it. Obviously I need a windshield. I've got a piece of plexiglass back here. I don't think I'm actually going to use the plexiglass for the windshield, but I think I may go ahead and cut one anyway because it'll kind of give me a template. I can stick it on there. I can see what it's like with that piece of plexiglass there. And then if I do cut one later out of heavier plexiglass or even out of real glass, I'll have this one to use as a pattern. So I think that's what I'm going to do. Um, I've also got some gauges. I want to re redo my wiring. I want to get my speedometer gauge in there and get a cable put on it. Uh, I want to put a new seal on the back of that transmission. Really got quite a long list of things to do and I got to get started sometime. So today is uh, Christmas Day. I, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, I cranked this thing for the first time Christmas Day last year. So it seemed like a good day to get started. I think I'll start by uh, getting the Rambler in here, getting the back end up in the air, getting the tires off of it, load that all in the truck and get it ready to go tomorrow. I'm going to need some more parts. I'm going to need a rear end seal and a speedometer cable. And so I'm just going to make a list and plan to go to the parts store in the morning. And then uh, we'll just kind of go from there. Uh, it's going to be a little bit of a challenge to move these cars around because of the snow out here. With those big fat tires on the back of the Roadster, it's a little hard to... Uh, drive it in the snow but as I'm checking this out my driveway ain't too bad so I believe I can pull it off While I was messing around with tires, I decided I'd go ahead and do some tire changing on this thing. I have been uh, thinking in terms of, you know, putting the spoke wheels on here. So what I did was I took both back tires and put them on one side. That allowed me to put the spokes uh, both on the same side. Keep in mind that back tire is a lot smaller and skinnier than the one it's going to be that you'll wind up being on there. But this kind of gives you a little bit of an idea of how she would sit or at least how she would look with spokes on both sides. That tire is a couple of inches taller than the uh, one I took off the back. You can actually see that it's uh, sitting sideways. It's sitting sideways because the other tire is so smaller. I like to look both ways, you know. I like it with the fat tires on the front, a lot. And I like it with the skinny tires on it. Uh, I don't think I could find another two more of those fat tires like that. And I figure for clearance, I need a taller tire anyway. But uh, it is fun to look at, and it's fun to get the old girl cranked up and running uh, on a cold winter day. You know, I don't get her out a lot, but it is kind of fun to have her out today. Uh, just because, just because it is. I think I might go for a ride even.
One nice thing about it is, if I did get these bigger tires on the back, these uh, big skinny tires, they probably set up even a little higher. That might be just about pretty good stance there, I don't know. Well, I'm out here messing around in the hot rod garage today. Uh, for quite some time, I've been trying to figure out what is the... Uh, the best way to go as far as you know how what kind of air cleaner I want to have uh, ideally if I had a boatload of money I would put a two four barrel intake on that put a couple of those uh, two barrel splitters I'll show you what I mean I've got uh, a thing up here that will split a four barrel off into uh, into two barrels I mean two one barrels and then I put four Stromberg 97's on top of this thing but that would probably cost me about 1500 bucks or maybe more uh, which is not the kind of money I have to spend. I have experimented with a teapot and a, and a <laughs> kind of a blower, which is a, just a joke. And, but, but for a real idea of something that would be cool here, I was uh, popping these hubcaps off the spoke wheels here the other day, and I was just looking at the size of that, and I thought, huh, isn't that interesting? Uh, that would sit, that could sit right there. That'd make a cool blower if I just put take one of those old hubcaps all I'd have to do pretty much is drill a hole right here, put a long bolt down through it, and I could leave this bottom on here, which would seal up this so that all the air would come in through the filter. Put this right on top of it, put my bolt right there. It gives a little bit of a look of an old-fashioned breather. I don't know how many of you are old enough to remember, but they used to have these big old oil bath breathers that had like two or three different layers, and they looked like that, only bigger. And I was thinking, you know, that would... That would be a really good look. I kind of like that. So I'm kind of thinking I might do something like that. See if I can get me another one of them old 35 Ford hubcaps and uh, just do that. That would be cheap and uh, cool and uh, would do a fine job of uh, filtering all the crap out of the motor. So I just thought I'd share that with everybody. Hope you all are having a nice day. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make me a... This used to have a vent in it right here that would flip up and let air in. Of course, all that's gone. But I'm going to make me a new door to cover this up and I want to have it where I can put a hinge on it and flip it open because obviously I got a lot of wiring and stuff here and I really like having access to all this stuff so I figured I'd make me a door and put a hinge on it and flip it down. I might even put a screen door hook or something like that on top of it to lock it down but that's what I'm going to work on is cutting that little vent right now. Alright I was wondering what I was going to make my vent out of and I had a big piece of metal over there that I could cut it out of, or I've got some aluminum right here, but I was thinking, I wouldn't it be nice if I could find something a little bit more interesting. Well, I, I got a buddy Stan that does a lot with bending metal, hammering on metal and stuff. And so I thought I'd try that. I took me an old car tag and hammered it, and uh, that makes a pretty good half bend. In fact, I'm, as I look at this, I'm thinking, well, if there was a hinge here, you know, and, and have another one over there and a hinge over there, it might be kind of cool, you know, a little bit more hammering to get that to the right shape. Uh, have me a vent door made out of a couple old hammered out tags. That might be kind of fun. I'm playing with that idea. All right, I got my vent hole stopped up. Made me a vent cover out of a couple of old main tag plates. I uh, drilled and uh, tapped either side of this. Put a bolt up through there with a uh, wing nut on it, and then just kind of put a washer on each side and hold that down. Oh, uh, that's good enough for the moment. If I decide to change it later, I will. Let's see how that goes. The reason I painted it is because when it wasn't painted, it looked so bright, it kind of, I don't know, something just didn't look right about it, it kind of drew your eyeball right all over it and dazzled you, you know, so I just painted it gray, it kind of matches the rest of the car better. 
can tell I never quite know what I'm doing until I get there. I, uh, I, uh, I painted this tag thing after I made it, but I still didn't quite exactly like the looks of it. And I went in and watched a video, and I, I looked at a picture of it before I changed it. I, I originally had these ends tucked in, and I straightened them back out and hammered on them. So what I did was I took me a, a rag with some thinner on it, and I wiped all over that, thinking I'd wipe some of that uh, primer off. Well, it didn't exactly work, so I got me a piece of sandpaper, and I just kind of went over the, the sandpaper. And that's the look I like right there. I, I, that look right there, it looks, I don't know, it looks just right. It, it, look, it fits with the rest of the car, as far as I'm concerned. So, that's perfect. And I can take that off, pop these two wing nuts out, lift that off, and still reach in there do my dash wiring. Uh, it's not watertight, but I ain't going to drive it in the rain anyway. I might get a little breeze blowing through it, but that many holes as I got in that firewall, bro. I don't think it'll matter much. Anyway, I guess I'm done fooling around with this. I'm, I'm liking the looks of that just fine, so that's it. Okay, I think I've got it ready to take down and get it inspected. Uh, when, I, when my dad died, Mom told me to drive his old van home, and he had this gray carpet in his van. And as I was looking at this floor, I made the piece to go up under the puddle there, but it's hard to make it exactly perfect and get it to fit in there and not have air holes and different things. And You know, I did bolt the tunnel down, but I thought, well, when I go to inspect this and they see daylight shining up through the floor, they probably ain't going to like that. Probably think a rock or a piece of gravel or something could fly up through there and hit me in the brain and kill me. So <laughs> I just took this old carpet that I saved out of Dad's old van and laid it down on the floor, kind of fitted it in there. I fitted, I made these seats with a little contour with the cloth material behind them. Uh, I got my headlights working bright and dim. And I've got my, my tail lights back here working. And my turn signals uh, working. And my brake lights are working. Heck, I'm ready. I am ready. I think that thing has moved a little, so I gotta I gotta adjust my light switch here, tighten it up a little bit. I love these seats, and I fitted them in here, and I sat in both sides and sort of tested them and tested them with this little back thing. It feels great. Uh, it's pretty windy outside. I, I may take it out and take it for a ride tomorrow. Uh, I'm still waiting for my tag. That's the big thing. I gotta get the have the state patrol come out, and look at it, and give me a VIN number so I can get a tag for it. But uh, you know, once that's done. And I'll drive it down and get me a sticker and then look out world.
crazy fun. That was crazy fun. Oh yeah, we got a little snow thrown up on her. I don't mind doing that because I didn't go anywhere that was salty. Uh, that snow on the driveway out front, that, that ain't a public road, so there ain't no salt trucks coming up through there. So it's just good clean water. Good clean fun. I'm cold.